Hi there again guys, welcome to Science Sidekicks and in this video we are going to be taking a look again in Tinkercad and we're going to be continuing on with what we did last time. So if you've been following along, we've done two previous videos. In video number one, we were basically showing how to write a very simple program, which we have here, which allowed us to control an LED. So if I start a simulation here, we have this button here, which is being controlled through the IO pins two and three, and it allows us to turn on and off the LED. In the second video, we then put in a physical override, which is this one here, which doesn't rely on the program at all. This is a physical connected switch in series to the LED. So two different methods of controlling the LED here. Now, in this video, we're going to add another component to here, which is going to be a buzzer. So here in Tinkercad, you'll find something called piezo, and this is a piezo buzzer. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this to our circuit. And what I would like to do this time is control this one also using the same program. So we'll add this to our breadboard here. Now you can see there's a positive and a negative on there. Um, I'm just going to rotate it around to make things a little tidier. Uh, no, you know what, we'll keep it this way. Okay, so we've got our positive and negative and we'll put one end going to the positive terminal and the other end goes to our negative terminal. Now, if we just simply wire it up like this and then we run everything, what do you think is gonna happen? The buzzer is going to turn on because we've just wired it straight. So you can hear now the buzzer is going off. Okay, so it's just gonna be on all the time and very annoying. What I want it to do is turn on and off with the LED. And we're going to do that by using the program. So in this case, if we use button number one, both the LED and the piezo will turn on. If we use button number two, only the LED is gonna turn on. Okay, so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to connect the positive side of the buzzer to another one of our I.O. pins. So we may as well put this to pin number four. So we'll get rid of that and we'll connect up here. We come out, down, across, and down to pin number four. Okay. Now we'll tidy things up just a little bit, space that wire up. That's just a cosmetic thing. Okay, so now we have pin number four connected to the input of our buzzer and the negative terminal is coming to the output or to our ground rail there. Now we're going to have to modify our program. So we'll go over to code. So first thing that we're going to need to do now is we're going to have to tell the Arduino on setup that pin mode number four is going to be output. So we're going to type that in pin mode and remember, it's case sensitive. Four will be output, and we terminate that with our semicolon. Okay, so now when the Arduino powers up, it's going to set pin number four to be an output pin. Okay, now moving down here to our loop, we're going to say if switch state is high, which means if our button is pressed, we're turning on the LED. Now what we want to do also is turn on the buzzer. So we're going to add here, digital right, pin number four will be high. And then down here, we're gonna put digital right, pin number four will be low. So now let's give this a go. If we run our code now, and the Arduino powers up. So now everything's powered on. If we push button number two, our LED comes on, no buzzer. If we push button number one, they should both come on. Controlled by the program. So as you can see, it's quite simple to wire up new components and connect them to the relevant or available I.O. pins, and we've got 13 I.O. pins here on our Arduino, so 
There's 13 different outputs or inputs that we can take in and out of this. And as we go on, we're going to start building more and more complex circuits. And we're going to, instead of having buttons, we'll have other things that can control our circuit. And don't forget that you can easily replace the buzzer or the LED for something else. So we could replace that, for example, for a motor. Now, you do have to be careful and make sure that we have enough current to power everything that we're putting here. There is a limit to the amount of current on the I.O. pins. Um, we'll explore that when we get deeper into things and we are looking at um, potentially turning on and off higher current or, or um, um, higher voltage um, um, components such as larger motors. So we're going to use relays and things to do that. But we'll cover that in later videos. Right now, um, we're just covering the basics of how to write a very simple program, how to control an I.O. pin, and making it actually do something. So if you do have an Arduino kit, you can now go and get your kit and you can put this circuit together and you can write this code and you can upload it to your Arduino. If you don't, that's fine. You can run it in here and you can build anything here in Tinkercad that you can build in the real world. So there's no reason why you can't learn electronics and follow along with our videos. Also the live videos with Rhiannon and I, where we're working with the physical Arduino kits. Um, you can follow along with this digital version here in Tinkercad. The link's in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.